the person who's going to take over is Charles and not William <laughs> because Charles is at Hi, good evening. This is Sarah Chiu. The program is Basket Starfish, our language call. Thank you for tuning in. Um, tonight I'm going to talk uh, more about the unseen, uh, uh, the symbol of unseen energy. It seems that a lot of the ancient pictographs actually uh, all share the same symbols. And uh, I'm going to concentrate a little bit on the head and the foot. And uh, I'm not sure if I can get to the foot today, but at least I hope I can uh, finish the head part. So um, here I am, I will start with that. And once again, uh, if you think I'm going too fast, you can uh, type in YouTube, type in the program name Basket Starfish, our language call, and you will find the last 42 episodes. Today should be the 43rd episode from the very beginning, okay? So you can type in the name and, and find all the past episodes about uh, all the different alphabets that I talked about. Okay, I'm going to start today. Okay, once again, I will show you the shape of the basket starfish so you will understand, you know, the core that I talk about, you know, that we all share. And uh, again, you know, I don't agree with the uh, family tree business because I don't think we are all separated uh, trees. Uh, we are actually uh, like this basket starfish, we share one sim, uh, single core and because uh, believing in the tree family uh, model, we can only usher in human hierarchy. That's why I think it needs to be changed and also in this research uh, for in my last uh, 20 something years of my life, I want to uh, give you another perspectives from from an Asian uh, female point of view okay so if you are very used to listening to a white man telling you everything then uh, if you don't think you know someone a female from Asia has any valid point then you can just uh, tune to the other uh, channel but if you are uh, interested to listen uh, here I am I would like to give you my point of view okay so First of all, I bring you again all the symbols of unseen energy, you know, from early pictograph. The first two are the essence and, and then the uh, this uh, horn form is from Sumerian. This one is uh, for proto sinaitic and this one, of course, you know, is from Phoenician that uh, gradually become the Greek one. And this one is the Chinese. Whenever uh, we see that in, in Chinese, you know, we know that either it represents the foot or it represent an unseen energy okay and this is an ancient Egyptian hieroglyph you know you know that this car part of the soul okay so all this horn animal right there developed uh, during the bronze age because they started to hurt animals around and for them this animal power become uh, one of their very important symbol so it appear in all these um, writings across region across time okay so I will tell you some of the sounds that the uh, the uh, linguists found out, and they said that this is G I. You can pronounce it as G, the hot G, or you can pronounce it as the soft G, G, okay? And then this is definitely a hot sound, a car, the part of the soul, and this means the essence, as I said to you, this in Chinese also means, you know, as an unseen energy, but it actually carry a lot of different sounds, you know, so uh, I don't want to confuse you, but I want you to uh, pay attention to this uh, three different sounds. Uh, first of all, is the A, the living sound, you know, if an, uh, an organ is alive uh, like a human being you know it will be able to make this R A E all this living sound so uh, in a way it links to the horn animal in another way it really live links to a living being okay so um, and actually in Latin you can understand as the alma the soul of a certain living being okay and um, I as I said you know in the later part of this uh, program I will also talk about the food this is uh, in ancient Sumerian, it, it uh, pronounces giri or jiri uh, as the foot, and of course in Chinese, gay is also the, 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 the foundation, and girl is also the foot. So uh, this is in a Chinese writing. You look at all these, you know, they are to share very similar, similar writing. So 
I show you uh, in the general uh, view, you know, to let you see that how we can only see the uh, truth by combining all the language together. Now our separation of everything into a different branch or different family uh, will actually uh, forbid us to see the, the reality. Okay, this is uh, Egyptian hieroglyph card. This is Gi in uh, or G in ancient Sumerian means essence. This is the soul, and this is Chinese and uh, gradually become the kin. As you can see the writing here, you can see, still see the horn right there. It actually for us it means you know a male uh, energy, and then of course you know you understand this you know the yin and yang sign in Chinese, and for us uh, we say kin and Quan uh, is actually the motion of the cosmos the universe okay so but if you take uh, away all this um, esoteric meaning of these words you can actually look at uh, something very very practical in the mechanical world as you can see this is a cock right it uh, turns around and even in English you call it a cock or you can uh, call it the gear okay so all this sound either go ka, 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 or actually you know a mutation of the same thing so of course you know it is the key of any um, machine that works and also is the key of if it is the soul it is the key of our existence and then it is the key that brings into a kinetic motion even in human being or as well as a machine and if you look at the machine word you know machine is mutated already and you will go back to the original song of machina if you speak Spanish or Latin, they all sound as machina. It is it's this king right there. That is the core word. And then, of course, you know, back to the A sound word. Uh, if you look at Greek as autos in Greek, it means the soul. Uh, the soul is which means uh, move you. And that's why in English you have the word automatic. That something will move, right? Even it sits idle, but it has the potential of moving. And they, we are all talking about the core power of any living or even non-living thing. If it's a machine, it is the the is the the core of the engine that actually like a spark plug that moves uh, the machine itself so uh, from ancient time to this very day you know those sound are still as alive as they were in this very day okay I will move on you know if you look at it in an esoteric way you know it you can understand it's the soul or the spirit of any action and uh, very obviously it always represented by the head or the foot uh, what you see now is uh, uh, in Sumerian, uh, they use it, you know, to mean the viral um, uh, energy of a male, and also it is the directional uh, point of uh, of twirling a thread. The same way the Chinese will use this horn animal to mean uh, twirling of a thread, uh, or uh, also it means the food or some unseen energy. So we actually use it in a very very similar way. This line I draw to just uh, now. I'm only comparing. Chinese and ancient Sumerian okay on this side is Chinese the other side is Sumerian and Sumerian has this sign right there for them it means the heart okay and in Chinese we have this uh, symbol for us it means the head so there's always an argument you know about where the soul lives either the soul lives in the head or in the, in the heart so uh, you can see that you know we always use this uh, interchangeably this is heart in Sumerian this is head in Chinese so uh, as time went by you know we have a, another symbol it actually goes on to mean the brain of the intelligence okay um, and then um, you have this feet right there for them it also means something to do with the soul or, or it actually means uh, if it's an animal it also means a uh, uh, fox you know that in fox in ancient uh, tradition it always means you know it's very clever animal so you will see that the animal feet upside down has this part right there that means as you know it has some kind of intelligence right there and you look back into the Chinese this is a Chinese word for thought you will see that it is actually the combination of this two energy put together um, and, and we look at it as the thought 
and then the the Sumerian also have this as a human food and somehow it has an engine that moves it because if the person is dead if they, there is no soul in that living being this food wouldn't be walking right so this is exactly um, the same way in Chinese I will show you later but then I will give you more proof because in Sumerian the symbol here it means the eggs uh, the eggs of course the all eggs host potential of potential of growth right and so you will see the same part it's right here and this uh, symbol right there it means the self you know the soul of the self of a, of, of a living entity and then the same thing that's put here that uh, to move this foot right there and then as I said this is a Chinese writing means the foot you will see that the foot has that engine right there that unseen energy to push it moving and then uh, this is uh, exactly the same as some uh, ancient Sumerian uh, the Sumerian writing doesn't uh, exist in the I mean doesn't survive in the cuneiform but in some artifacts I can actually see it very clearly carved out in the Sumerian tablets okay so it is exactly the same form right there and then I will show you, you know, as time went by, you know, the Greek will have this word. This is a very classic word in all the classical, uh, in ancient Greek, I actually should say. In ancient Greek, you know, when Homer writes, you know, this is the word to most that he used to mean the heart, the courage, the spirit or the soul, something that lived inside. But you have to pay attention to this letter right there. Before the letter reached this stage, they actually appear in different form. First of all, I will show you in how the from all this alphabet it changed to Phoenician and finally into Greek so this is uh, the A form you know you will see that it's it coordinates with that and then you will see that the TH the theta went through a few different stages I sometimes it's like this and then later become like this and it become like this three different form you know and finally this form survived to become the theta this you know so you will see that the ancient actually look at all all this not as symbol uh, as pure symbol or, or pure writing they look at it they understand it there is actually a meaning uh, embedded into all this meaning you will see that how closely related they are together and you can look at it you can also understand it as the heart or you can understand as the head okay so they also have another word in uh, an ancient Greek, you know, this thermo, that's where the word thermometer come from. It's, it's everything to do with the heat, you know, some, some heat generating thing. It seems that they understood, they try to explain their own world, you know, because, you know, a living being is always carry some kind of warmth. They understand that a person dies, it becomes cold, and when it, when it is, uh, the, when the soul left the body, so they actually link very, very closely together even the temperature they understand the world in a very three-dimensional way not the same way that we read you know statically I mean uh, in, a, in, a, in a room uh, far away from reality they actually understand words in a very very interesting 360 degree way they understand the heart and because they know that there is warmth there only when the soul is around okay so of course, you know, again, you know, this symbol I keep telling you about the uh, the symbol of unseen energy. It has to do with living being, the I, E, I, O, U, all this vowel sound that a living being can make. And, and, and of course, you know, this become all the vowel. You see this emotion. It is the emotion that drive action. Okay. So this aspire, aspire, the aim, the ache for something, when you urge for something, that all give you you know a, a motive to 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 go on motion okay and and definitely you know all this anger eerie other is all heated emotion if you have all this heated emotion that drives you to uh, get your desire so it's everything points back you know to action itself that's why you know this uh, horn head is always headed all these action this words right there until this very day and uh, now I begin to uh, focus on the head or the heart because I have no way to separate these two things since the ancient uh, also had no way they have always argue where the soul is living so but I want you to pay attention 
addition to this also the th the tether right there and now it become uh, writing like this but you have to bring your uh, brain you know back to the uh, ancient Greek when they were looking at you know that that circle with a cross in, in inside okay uh, the head is carries the thought or the heart carries the emotion okay so I will show you all the symbol this is Chinese the head this is Sumerian the heart and this is uh, if you look at it as the ancient Greek or you look at it as linear B or A it all you know carries you know a uh, uh, very interesting uh, part uh, in ancient Greek it can be a tether and of course it links to God uh, word or if you look at it it's linear A and B it carries the sound car and car is actually also arrived at the ancient Greek word of kafali or the kadir either the head kafali or the kadir which is the uh, the the, the the word heart okay so everything is intertwined and so it's almost impossible to um, separate them so it goes back you know to the uh, in the Egyptian hieroglyph way of expressing the soul the car they again they they show it as an animal right there and and when you put the Sumerian and the uh, Egyptian hieroglyph together you actually get the Chinese oh, sorry get the Chinese word you know thought itself this is the Chinese word thought okay you will see the two very important symbol put together so um, it is very difficult to really tell you whether they believe it is uh, uh, thinking inside the heart or inside the head okay so if you, uh, I have to explain to you because I give you uh, uh, a little bit from every single culture because uh, no culture will survive on its own if they don't interact with other cultures. So I give you some, um, if you don't study uh, philosophy, neither do I, but I cannot avoid touching it because the more I look into symbol, the more I, I found that I have to look into all the ancient philosophy. The Aristotle actually kept talking about this unmoved mover you know in in Greek it will be like this it's called U, U, kinu, menon, kine, okay so uh, you will say the very important core word for this is this kin right there uh, it's of course you can look at it as the kinesis or the kinetic movement so this kinetic movement can be idle or if they have a spark plug plug you know they can start moving so you will see that you know the ancient just express it in a different way um, this is again this is the Chinese kin which is the uh, male energy that push downward the female energy actually push upward so uh, without one you know there will be no uh, complete movement this is at least how the ori or oriental understand uh, the, the cosmos but you can if you're from the west you can understand it is the key or the core of existence but if, uh, whenever you see this two power moving the others is moving you have to understand there is an axle which shouldn't be moving but this axle is actually moving without being seen to be moved so uh, it's very difficult for me uh, even English is not my mother tongue but I'm trying to tell you that all this moves you have to understand that something is not moving so something can be moved okay so I think Aristotle also went through a very difficult time trying to explain it to people and um, again I will show you all this tattoo word you will see that you know that's why um, the word itself gradually become the God word for it for the Greek Theos, and then um, it is not the first one, so I want, actually want to chase it back. This is Theos, you know, for them, they uh, the Greek become uh, uh, the believers of Christianity, the monotheism, but before that, in the paganism, in the pantheism, uh, they believe in everything, they actually use the Theos, you know, Theos and Theos, actually for the uneducated, they sound very similar. It was only visually for the educated to distinguish the two different gods, okay? So, but then uh, I will show you a uh, very, very similar sound, and so if you lived in the ancient world, nothing much changed okay this is Chinese 
Tai or T, okay, in Chinese. And this is in ancient Sumerian D, okay. So the spell is like this, but you should pronounce it as D, okay, okay. So it, you can see that it's very, very similar. They all represent the cosmo uh, god. But then you go back uh, later, then we have gradually, because we believe in that uh, ancient uh, creator, then the Chinese begin to have a writing. You can see that the uh, the two hands, you know, reading a scroll right there. We call it Din. For us, Din is the canon, the law, everything, the tradition that you have to follow. And then the Din in Arabic actually become a re the religion. And then the Dot actually in Hebrew also become the religious knowledge. So you will see that uh, the sound actually uh, stay in the same area. They develop all in different cultures, still continues in their own line okay so but I will let you uh, look at the other side other than developing on this side the other side also prove that they also share very very similar view this is Chinese again the unseen energy the food and then this is in Sumerian the food you will see that both of uh, the Chinese and the Sumerian know that they have to put an engine right there next to the body part to show that there is a soul pushing it to move okay so by this uh, this symbol by itself is the heart and then uh, Chinese has the symbol by itself is the head so it's either the heart or the head and then as time went by there is another reading we call it no no it actually means the brain or the intelligence in Chinese and then this is the, uh, the as I said either to think or the thoughts itself and uh, this part developed you know actually become the heart so you will see that sometimes the Chinese also look at this as the heart not necessarily the head but the heart okay so uh, I will bring back the Aristotle uh, uh, thinking he actually said that thoughts are the most divine of things now we come back to the all these philosophy argument whether God is outside of you or whether God is inside you in a very human level level uh, Aristotle also agree that the thought itself is the most divine of thing that means that divine God is actually living inside your own self you can tell yourself to do things not from the outside okay so um, all through human history we are just debating all this inside or outside constantly but I want to show you how closely the sound also related this is a Greek word nu nu in um, ancient Greek also means you know the brain the intelligence or the temple the area right in front of your head so you will see that both the Chinese in ancient time or the ancient Greek already sharing the same sound meaning the same thing so don't tell me that we are different families trees we are sharing one single core okay I will go to the next slide again um, words are very interesting if I say the temple you can refer it as the head and as I just said that the no in Chinese or the nu in uh, Greek both means the site of thought and but then you can also mean temple also has another meaning uh, a, a religious building okay and there is the uh, very uh, alive uh, English word even now now is still meaning the dwelling of God where God lives so sometimes we extend our physical body you know to to a building and that building itself become the abode of God so either than the human beings body become the apple of God and also a building outside of a body also become the body of God okay so I will show you something very very interesting in this slide that as I said the Chinese has this no uh, meaning the brain intelligence and we have this symbol meaning the thought and I will show you that one very interesting writing right there there is a 
very very famous Chinese man by this name and then um, I, when I look up the dictionary it also referred it to a further writing means this this is a man that all the Chinese respect as Confucius Confucius has a very interesting name uh, that uh, that the the legend goes according to how Confucius looked the, everybody uh, said that you know he has two hills on top of his head so no one understood you know this was the ancient writing two hills on his head so when I look up the dictionary it actually mean uh, refer to an even earlier uh, legendary emperor of ancient China this legendary uh, leader of the ancient Chinese they he obviously also has two hills on his head and he's famous for his um, teaching about uh, giving up his own throne, kind of an, an application of his own throne uh, to people who has ability instead of the heritage thing. The, he was against uh, passing on the throne to the, his this next generation. He was all about giving up his throne to a people who has ability so look at what confucius looks like okay according to this picture that people imagine so this is a picture of confucius it's always like this it's a very uh bald head right there and the chinese is not a nation of making statue this is a very recent one so they do do not know how to deal with these two hills so this is how they deal with it but if you look at ancient picture this is how the ancient deal with it too because they don't know what to do with this ancient writing so they just invented a head for confucius to put in put on so when Whenever we saw this head which doesn't really exist in all ancient Chinese history this is the only person Confucius that wh whoever wear a head like this because of the ancient writing but I will show you one very interesting uh, thing happened in ancient Greece okay this is the ancient uh, word new intelligence and mind in ancient Greek and um, but look at how uh, the Orthodox Church will depict a clever man. You look at these two hills right there. Can you see that they were talking about the same thing since ancient time? Isn't it interesting? We were sharing the same thing. The people who were not educated actually pass on the tradition in a very interesting way. So I will show you quickly that uh, I, I don't even get to this, uh, but I will show you just the pictures of how this intelligence was shown in other religion okay so sorry okay so you will see that this is how they look at intelligence in other religious way okay so um so i haven't got time to finish type in youtube you will uh my the name of the program you will